Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'll be doing some hot foiling and stenciling to make a card using products in the Spellbinders Glimmering Flowers collection. And I have three of the products in this collection, specifically the Glimmering Buttercups Glimmer Plate, which has five flowers and it does cover the front of a five by seven card front. Of course, you don't have to make a five by seven card with this. You can always cut it down to an A2 size card, which is what I'm gonna do today. And this glimmer plate has a matching stencil. So once you hot foil using the glimmer plate, you can use this stencil with your inks to add color to the flowers and the leaves. I'll also be using the Curved Everyday Sentiments Glimmer Plate and Die Set. This die set has 14 different sentiments that you can make with hot foil and then die cut them out with these coordinating dies that are shaped like a banner. Some of the sentiments that are in this glimmer plate include birthday wishes, just because, many thanks, sending prayers, get well soon, happy retirement, welcome baby, and there's so much more. So I'll be starting out using the Glimmering Buttercups Hot Foil Plate, and I'm also using the Spellbinders Gold Foil, and I'm just cutting some of the foil down to size for what I need for this large hot foil plate. So I'm bringing in my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine. You will need one of these machines when working with these hot foil plates. I already had my glimmer machine turned on and heated up. I went ahead and put my glimmer plate on top and I just pressed the timer button and when that timer button stops flashing, it will let me know that the platform is ready for me to add my foil. Went ahead and brought in my Spellbinders die cutting and embossing machine as well because I will need this machine to run this glimmer plate through. So here my machine is ready, so I'm placing my foil with the foil side down. I like to undock the platform from the base before I start adding these plates on top just because I don't want anything to shift. So I'm just going to undock it here and then I have my paper and then I have the two plates that came with the glimmer machine and now I'm just going to run this through my die cutting and embossing machine. I'm going to go ahead and set the paper with the foil. I'm going to set that aside for right now and I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment glimmer plate to the top of this glimmer machine. Make sure that gets nice and hot and I've already cut down some gold foil to size so I'll place that on top of the glimmer plate and then I'm going to add my foil and then my cardstock, and then I'm going to add the two plates, and then I'm going to pop that out of the glimmer machine, and then I'll run that through my die cutting machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and reveal what this looks like. Here are the glimmering buttercups. You can see how beautiful all that gold hot foil is. Now let's peel back the foiling from the sentiments and I can see that the glimmer plate actually shifted as I took that out of the platform. But that's okay, I can still use this. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut those sentiments out. Now, if I wanted to use the birthday wishes on the top, I of course would have to redo this, but the other sentiments are still perfectly fine. So I'll go ahead and choose from one of those sentiments and just die cut this. And what I love about it is that you can hot foil all the sentiments at once and then run this banner die through and you can have several sentiments at one time. So just a reminder that this glimmer plate comes with two glimmer plates, but I only used one here. So there is a whole nother set of seven sentiments that come with this glimmer plate. 
So next I'm going to work on coloring up these buttercups using the stencil as well as some inks. So there are five stencils in this set and I'm using the first one here. They are numbered at the bottom. You can use these in any order that you wish. They don't have to be used in numerical order. I went ahead and lined up the stencil with the flowers and I used some mint tape just to hold the stencil down onto my cardstock and I'm using a very small blending brush to get into these areas of my stencil. I'm going to be using three different color inks for these petals. I'm going to start at the end of each one of the petals with my darkest pink ink which is the picked raspberry and then I'm going to come in with a medium color pink which is the kitsch flamingo and then I'm going to finish that up by adding my lightest color pink towards the center of those petals and that is the spun sugar and between each application, since I'm using the same blending brush, I am just using a paper towel just to wipe off the darker ink before I came in with the lighter ink. So then I decided with the other petals to go ahead and start with the lightest ink and then work my way to the darkest ink. So I'm using the smaller blending brush here because it gives me more control. If I had a larger blending brush and I started rubbing that blending brush over top of this stencil. I wouldn't be able to add the different color pink inks because the larger blending brush would take up such a large amount of space on this stencil. So using the smaller blending brush it allows me to add the three different color inks which gives me some shading which I really love. And the blending brush that I'm using is the Waffle Flower Zero Plus uh, blending brush and I will have all of these supplies linked down in the description box below so if you're interested in anything that you see me use here today check down in the description box for those product links. So I'm going to do this process for all of these petals and then once I'm finished I'll go ahead and remove that first stencil and then the next stencil is going to work on the outside petals and I'm going to color these in my darkest ink which is the picked raspberry and I'm just coming in with a little bit of a larger blending brush because I know that I want all of these petals to be in the darker color so it's like these petals are kind of like the ones that are in the back and they sh are the ones that have a lot of shadow on them so I'm coloring them with my darkest ink. Once I finish that I will go ahead and remove that stencil and you can see how that's coming along. I think this is turning out so pretty. Now I'm going to work on some leaves so I'll line up the next stencil and for the leaves I'm going to give them a two-toned green effect. I'm going to color up my darkest green at the bottom of the leaf which is my Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink and then I'm going to come in with the mowed lawn and I'm going to just blend that darker color all the way up the top of the leaves with the mowed lawn Distress Oxide ink. So once the stencil is removed you'll see that there's some light greens and dark greens on these leaves. Alright so I'll go ahead and remove that one and I'll add the next stencil and I'm just going to repeat the process by doing the same exact thing. So this stencil has some more of the leaves. It also has some of the stems for the flowers. So I'm just going to color all of those up in both of the same color inks, the Rustic Wilderness and the Mowed Lawn. So I'll go ahead and remove that stencil and the last stencil is also some leaves. It's just a different style of leaf 
and I'll go ahead and repeat the process using those same two color green inks. So while I'm finishing this up, I do want to let you know that if you like the stencil and the glimmer plate combo, you can purchase them as a bundle. Or if you are not interested in the stencil at all, you can purchase the glimmer plate by itself. And then the curved everyday sentiments, those are not included in the bundle. bundle. Those are separate as well. All right, so let's go ahead and reveal. This is so beautiful. I love how you can just add your inks and color that up and you can use any color ink that you choose to really change up these flowers. So the Distress Oxide inks that I use, they do sit on top of the cardstock. So in case I got any of that ink over top of any of that foiling, I'm just coming in here with a paper towel and I'm just gonna buff off some of that ink where the foil is just to make sure that if there's any ink sitting on top of the foil that it does come off and that foil shines nice and bright on top of the cardstock. You can also see how large those flowers are on that cardstock. So you can use this for a 5x7 card, but I'm going to cut mine down to fit on an A2 size card using a rectangle nesting die. I'm just taking one of my nesting dies and layering it on top of the design on the cardstock. And once I have it where I want it, I'll go ahead and add some mint tape to hold the die down and run it through my die cutting machine. And once that comes out of the die cutting machine, I'm just going to peel off that mint tape. And now I'm just going to add some more sparkle and depth to this card. And I'm going to take out my Nuvo Sparkle Spray. This is the color Cream Gold. And I'm just going to flick on some splatters of gold on top of this cardstock. Just adding these gold splatters, it just adds another extra layer of texture to this card as well as some more shine and I think that turned out so pretty. So now we're ready just to put this card together. I have a piece of gold mirror cardstock and I cut that down to four by five and a quarter but I'm going to use another nesting die to cut the center out so I can save the center of that cardstock and I'm going to go ahead and add this gold cardstock to the top of a piece of pink cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'll go ahead and add my flower layer to the top of that. And that flower layer, the measurement of that one is 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and 1 eighth. Now I'm going to add a sentiment to this. I did die cut out of some gold mirror cardstock another banner, just a plain banner, and I'm going to layer the sending love sentiment on top of the gold banner so that I have a little bit of a gold edge. And I'm going to add some foam to the back of that sentiment so that it's popped up on my card. So I'll go ahead and add that to the card and then I'll add that entire card layer to an A2 size card base. So my final card measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And that's going to complete this card. So I hope you liked my card today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And again, if you are interested in any of the products you see here today, be sure to check the description box for product links. And thanks so much for watching, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.